Angels, it's Haley Reese, and I hope that you guys are having an absolutely fantastic morning, afternoon, or night, whatever it is for you when this video finally reaches you. Today's video, you guys, is one that I have been meaning to make for quite some time. It is the epitome of what the will to survive can do for you in the darkest, most dangerous of situations, and it took place on Christmas Eve many years ago. Back in 1971, a 17-year-old girl was the lone survivor of a plane crash into the Amazonian rainforest, which whew, I can't even fathom what she went through, but she survived. And we're gonna dive into her case today, what happened to her and what she was able to do to survive over 10 days in the Amazonian rainforest. Before I get into today's video, I just wanna remind you guys that I'm not only uploading every single day here on this channel, but I'm also uploading every single day this month on my vlog channel, Daily Haley. I actually just uploaded a video answering your guys' juicy questions over a glass of wine. So if you guys wanna check out that channel, I'll have it linked down below. But without further ado, let's get into this case because this case, had me questioning so many things about myself and really questioning my character in comparison to what my will to survive would be. Basically meaning my fears in comparison to my adrenaline. And I'm really excited to go through this case with you guys and share it with you because it's absolutely mind blowing. On Christmas Eve in 1971, 17 year old Julianne Kopka and her mother boarded Lanza Flight 508. The two were traveling to visit her father who was working in the Amazonian rainforest and they all hoped to spend Christmas together. Now, Julianne and her mother were supposed to leave two days earlier. However, she had just graduated high school and begged her mom to leave later so that she could celebrate her prom, go to the dance, and enjoy what you would want to enjoy at 17 years old. So her mother said, okay, and they were set to leave two days later. Aboard the flight were 86 passengers and six crew members making a total of 92 people. All was fine for the first 25 minutes of the flight and then suddenly the plane entered a heavy storm and storm clouds and began to experience strong turbulence, causing luggage and other items, including Christmas presents and cakes, to be thrown around the cabin. Now what's even crazier is that the crew did see the storm approaching, but chose to continue onwards in order to meet the Christmas deadlines. Everybody had somewhere to be for Christmas and they didn't want to intervene with those plans. So they continued on. Basically choosing a holiday schedule over people's safety, but I've actually heard some pretty sketchy things about this airline at that time anyways, so we'll leave that at that and just continue on with the story. Julianne remembered and said, my mother and I held hands, but we were unable to speak. Other passengers began to cry and weep and scream. And the last thing that she remembers her mother saying was that this was the end, which as like a big mama's girl, you guys know my mom is my entire world. And to even fathom a moment like this just absolutely blows my mind. And it's a reason that I don't do as many true crime cases or cases of this nature is often because I'm very empathetic and to imagine myself in this position and what's about to transpire in her story, um, it breaks my heart. So to be right next to your mother, Julianne was at the, the window seat and her mom was right next to her and for her to be holding her mother's hand and hear her mom say, this is the end would just be um, absolutely horrible. As the chaos persisted, her and her mother saw lightning all around the plane. And while I obviously don't understand something of this nature, Tyler and I went to Jamaica a few years ago, like years ago now, and we went through a thunderstorm coming home from Jamaica. And even though nobody around looked scared, it was really creepy for me. Like there was flashes of lightning and thunder and the only thing lighting the plane was um, the actual lightning, which is something that Julianne remembers from her personal experience. And something that I've always done is I've never really had a fear of flying. However, whenever like 
turbulence is happening or things are happening outside of the plane, I always look around the plane like, am I being crazy? Is this my anxiety or is this a little freaky? And then I'll just have to put my headphones in and, and zone it out. But I have went through a storm and, um, and it, was, it was scary. The airplane was then directly struck by lightning and split in half mid air. Passengers and the wreckage began plummeting down to the ground, which is every flyer's worst nightmare. Still strapped in her seat, Julianne was only falling for a few seconds before she lost consciousness, but she would fall over 10,000 feet to the ground. And she would land in the middle of the Amazonian rainforest, which experts have now deemed the fact that she was still strapped in her seat while falling out of the plane is probably a big reason for her survival because it acted as a parachute of sorts. They say that her seat must have caught air in a way similar to that of a parachute and then have cushioned her fall. And they also said the area that she fell into, she must have hit different branches and trees and things of that nature to kind of slow her descent down to the ground. But she survived and over 10,000 foot fall to the ground. When she awoke the next morning, all that she could really process was the basic facts. Number one, she had just survived a plane crash. And number two, she really just couldn't see out of one of her eyes. In fact, she had lost her glasses in the plane crash, but on top of that, her eyes had been severely damaged as well, one more than the other. So one eye in particular was difficult for her to see out of, and the other one wasn't the greatest either. It took her a while to really come to consciousness and be able to figure out what she was going to do next and it took her a little bit longer to be able to finally get up and figure out what she was going to do. She actually said, My first thought was I survived an air crash. I would broken my collarbone and had some deep cuts on my legs but my injuries weren't serious. I realized later that I had a ruptured ligament in my knee but I could walk. Now her first initial instinct was to call for her mother, which is heartbreaking to me. Uh, she figured because her mother had been right next to her, she couldn't be too far from her. So she went on a search for her mother and had hopes that she'd be able to save her. But unfortunately, all that she was able to uncover in time was signs of the wreckage from the crash. She found wreckage from the plane, suitcases, bodies and even though there would be like seats of three people that she would discover and she knew she was the third person she was constantly searching for her mother whom she would never personally find and that was when she realized that she was in fact totally alone which i can't even fathom going through such a traumatic event having injuries the way that she did even though her injuries given what she'd been through should have been much worse I just can't fathom realizing that you are totally alone in the middle of a rainforest, but her will to survive kicked in. She remembered survival advice given to her by her father. He told her, if you see water, follow it downstream. That's where civilization is. A small stream will flow into a bigger one and then a bigger one and an even bigger one and finally you'll run into help. So began her journey down the stream. Sometimes she walked and sometimes she swam. Julianne had lost one shoe but decided to keep the other because she'd lost her glasses. She would use it to kind of figure out the ground and if there were any animals ahead of her. In one bag that Julianne would stumble upon, she'd find a little bag of candy and that would be the only substance of food that she would survive off of for the next 10 days. So could you imagine, you guys, falling out of a plane, landing, losing your mother, finding a bag of candy and going through what, and going through the water, either swimming or walking to try to find some sort of civilization. Like as much as this case is so fascinating, I can't help but put myself in her shoes and think about the fact like, imagine if you were in that situation, like her will to survive and her strong mindset goes to prove that things that you learn when you're young are so important. Well, let's continue. 
Julianne would hear and see rescue planes and helicopters above, but any attempt that she made to get their attention was unsuccessful. The plane crash actually prompted one of the biggest search parties in Peru's history, but due to the density of the forest, they were unable to even see wreckage from the plane crash, let alone a single person. So even though she would try to get their attention, she was unable to. Now the Amazon rainforest isn't just dangerous for somebody who can't find food. There are many dangers, such as the animals lingering around and just the many factors of walking alone through the Amazonian rainforest. But Julianne was fortunate. When she was about 14 years old, she spent 18 months living with her parents in a research station that was located not too far from the crash site. While living there, the young girl learned quite a bit about the dangers lurking in the rainforest, and more importantly, she learned how to avoid them. Now, sleep was very, very difficult for Julianne. Not only was sleeping in a rainforest alone difficult, but the bug bites were relentless, and she would later learn that the gash in her arm was infested with maggots. But instead of succumbing to that reality, she decided that she knew she had to push on in order to survive. Now for me personally, I can't even fathom going through a rainforest with a gash in my arm infested by maggots, but at 17 years old, she was stronger than anybody could even imagine. By the 10th day, she couldn't even stand properly, but had drifted alongside the edge of a larger river. She said, and I quote, I felt so lonely, like I was in a parallel universe far away from any human being. I thought it was hallucinating when I saw a really large boat. When I went to touch it and realized it was real, it was like an adrenaline shot. But then I saw there was a small path into the jungle where I found a hut with a palm leaf roof, an outboard motor and a liter of gasoline. Julianne patiently waited by the boat for the owner's return because despite what she'd been through, she did not want to take their boat without their permission. At this point, she remembered that her dog had had a similar infection and remembered what her father had done with it. So she decided to suck out the gasoline and put it into her wound. She picked 30 maggots out of her wound and decided to get a good night's sleep. The next day, she heard the voices of men outside and said, It was like hearing the voices of angels. When they saw me, they were alarmed and stopped talking. They thought I was a kind of water goddess, a figure from a local legend who is a hybrid of a water dolphin and a blonde, white-skinned woman. But I introduced myself in Spanish and explained what had happened. They would tend to her wounds and give her some food and she would have her first restful sleep since the night that this all happened began for her. The next morning they took her downstream for about seven hours where a local pilot would airlift her to a hospital where she was reunited with her relieved father. Julianne also helped authorities locate the plane and over the course of a few days they were able to find and identify the dead bodies. Of the 91 people aboard, Julianne Kropka was the sole and only survivor. On January 12th, they came across the remains of Marie Kopka, Julianne's mother, and to her heartbreak, disbelief, and regret, Julianne would find out that her mother had survived the initial plane crash, but succumbed to her injuries a few days later. And it would be something that she would really beat herself up over, wondering if she could have found her mother and helped her and saved her. She still feels guilt to this day that she wasn't able to help her mother. And this part of the case is what really, really gets me. Um, death is inevitable, unfortunately, and reassuringly, there's gonna be a point where we all will meet our fate. And the reason I say reassuringly is it's something that we can't stress over. Eventually, it will happen to all of us, but how people meet that fate is what's so heartbreaking and traumatizing and heavy. And I can't even fathom being on a plane with my mother that we should have been on days before and then finding out that my mother had been alive and I could have found her, even though it was not her fault by any means. I can understand why she might feel that way and it breaks my heart that she ever did because it wasn't her fault and there was no reason for her to blame herself like that.
After the crash, Julianne moved back to Germany and fully recovered from all of her wounds. Like her parents, she would get a degree in biology and return to Peru to do extensive research on bats. Her remarkable story of survival has been the subject of many books and films. When I first heard about this case, I had to share it with you guys because it really puts into effect what you're able to overcome and push through when survival becomes a necessity. And she was so lucky that her parents had taught her survival in a rainforest from such a young age. But nonetheless, the story is a true testament to the power of her brain and her heart and what she was able to overcome to survive. And I really, really was excited to share that with you guys. I would love to know what you guys think of this case. To me, it was so mind blowing and empowering even though what she went through is something that nobody should ever have to go through, it was so incredible to see what we're capable of as human beings when we're put in a situation where we have no choice but to push through it and survive. So I'm so curious to know what you guys think of this and that is it for today's video. If you guys are new to my channel or you are just not yet subscribed but you do enjoy my videos, I would absolutely love it if you would go ahead and click that subscribe button and please give this video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Remember my loves, do all things with kindness. And until next time, I love you.